Welcome back to Classic Replay. This time we're looking at ZX Spectrum ports to the Amstrad CPC. Back in 1984 or early 1985, you'd have received your Amstrad CPC, safe in the knowledge that you were moving over to a color personal computer. Some of you probably moved from the ZX Spectrum to the Amstrad CPC or from another 8-bit computer. For me, this was my first ever home computer and Alan Sugar's first foray into the home-bit computer market. Because God knows what Alex Sugar would have made of all this. <laughs> the Amstrad CPC was full of quick and dirty specy ports, stripped of 16 color and some even including the beeper sound, making it hard to look past even the decent specy ports. Kenny Dalgleish is a prime example. Strangely, this footy game has its fans, but the Amstrad CPC port was like wading through treacle. The Kenny Dalgleish signature was bigger than the actual playing screen. It was the equivalent of watching non-league football. Not for me, thanks. It's not difficult to see why specy ports are mostly hated across the CPC community. You're fired. I'm bored. And what's the point having an increased back catalogue of games if they're all massive duds? This is the Sinclair ZX Spectrum version of Dandy, short for Dungeons and Dragons. It's also famous for being Gauntlet's most prominent influence and therefore one of the founding fathers of dungeon crawlers. In fact, Dandy arrived a whole two years before the classic Atari hit game, Gauntlet. The Spectrum version is an absolute blast of a game. Everything in Gauntlet 1 and 2 does it better, but this port to the Amstrad CPC is still highly playable. A little bit slower, strangely with less colour, but even a bad port couldn't kill a game like this. It really comes into its own if you play with a friend. You get plenty of health. And I really liked it as a kid. It's a great little dungeon crawler. If you bought and played this game, the joke was on you. It's a martial arts game only in name. Even at budget price, this would be an insult. You have to beat these other wretched animals four times, a whole four times to progress to the next stage. It's all highly repetitive stuff with rubbish sound and half decent graphics. You've got to save your village and fight your way through eight villainous enemies. Thank goodness there's a two player option that drastically improves things. This Amstrad CPC port is almost an exact copy of the ZX Spectrum. Sound is still abysmal. Graphics lack any real detail or colour, but it retains the speed of the ZX Spectrum version and the two-player option. Personally, for me, it's just not enough to save the game. It's fair to say that it's completely different to the run-of-the-mill uh, other martial arts games on the Amstrad CPC. Someone needs to clean that mess up. But once you've mastered the tried and tested sweeping kick, that's all you have to do to complete the game. For me personally, this is one of the best budget games on the ZX Spectrum. It's basic platform and ladders, jumping over the nasties, but it's lovely to look at and it really is a terrific game. There's eight ingredients to collect and you need a particular ingredient in order to move on to the next screen. Get the ingredient and there's a big kiss waiting for you. The Amstrad version, although a specy port, loses none of its charm. Features the same great gameplay, moves at pace, and no matter how busy the screen gets, there's no slowdown whatsoever. This is yet another game that would have benefited from 16 color, mode zero, but when the game plays this good, you can't really moan. Right, let's get down the pub and get smashed. If you've never played this one, you might just be pleasantly surprised. The 80s were obsessed with controlling balls in a game. Hopping mad felt like an arcade conversion that never was. 
Your Sinclair was suitably impressed and rewarded this one 81%. Those with a thin patience won't appreciate what's on offer here, but for the rest of us willing to persevere, this is actually a rewarding little game. The Amstrad is more of the same stuff. It's a blatant specy port, but features a smaller screen and a choppier bounce. It's still bags of fun to play, but at times it feels like there's a bit of a lag in the controls, making an already difficult game feel near impossible. I'd say play the specy version instead, and maybe give this one a try if you're curious after playing that version. I remember the first time I ever played this, Gauntlet went 3D. And it's absolutely brilliant. I really enjoyed playing this on the ZX Spectrum. It's fast paced, easy to get into, but difficult to put down. There's lots to do in single player mode and even better in two player mode. For this type of game, it scrolls absolutely wonderfully. This is Spectrumitis, as Amstrad Action put it, at its best. As you can see, it's ever so slightly slower, but it's just as smooth, sounds just as good, and for me, plays absolutely wonderful. Most people owning an Amstrad CPC won't be able to get over the graphics, but for those that do, a brilliant adventure awaits. Escape from the Tree Kingdom and you won't be able to put it down. This is a bit of a tough one. You've parachuted in and you now need to accomplish certain tasks to get you back to where you need to be. The cipher machine will show you the way via satellite link up, but every time you use it, it will zap away at your energy. You'll either need to find a map off the internet or map this one out as you play it, but it's well worth it. It's an enjoyable game and the puzzles are quite interesting. It's got that mixture of steaming in there like Rambo, but then using brains, not brawn, to solve some of the puzzles. There's not much to say about the Amstrad CPC version. It's practically identical. In fact, I can't tell them apart, which is a crying shame because they could easily have used more colors in this game. Like the Spectrum version, it's varied enough to keep you playing, but it's definitely a thinking man's shooter. The problem is this might look entertaining and the sort of game where you want to shoot and dodge but it looks awful, it moves awful, you just randomly get knocked off the window and fall to your death and it's not something you'll probably ever want to load up again. There's just too many cheap deaths throughout and this one unfortunately specky port or not never stood a chance. As you can see on the display there, the Amstrad version is even worse, it's choppier, it's slower, there's some differentiation in the sprite colours, but again it's just a really disappointing shoot and dodge game. No doubts it could have been really playable. This is one where even a splash of colour would have done little to save this game. Equally the sound effects and the music are goddamn awful, I'd have preferred them not to be in the game. So this one is a massive avoid from me. Badlands is a great little ZX Spectrum conversion. It features the same layout as the Coinop original. There's a 128K version. It's fast and responsive and a heck of a lot of fun to play. I can't help think though that Domark could have done more. But you can't argue that this version of Badlands is basically a good arcade conversion. Straight from the off, once again, I'm sad to say that the Amstrad CPC conversion came off second best. Although there'll be no photo finish, thankfully it's still highly playable. It's not left stalled on the line, but it's very difficult to look past the lack of effort involved here. This is basically a straight specy port. But overall, this is a solid specy port that delivers on playability. Unfortunately, once again, the source material isn't up to much on this ZX Spectrum game. Players Premier were known for some really dodgy games. And although it looks promising and a little bit like uh, resembling Gunsmoke, why play this when you can play Akari Warriors or the excellent Commando? 
Such a shame. As if things couldn't get any worse, this game is finished in Chase HQ ZX Spectrum Yellow and looks to run at half the speed. The graphics are terrible, slow, and I'm sorry it's not even addictive in the slightest. They didn't even bother with the sound effects or music. And if you look closely, there's tearing in the scroll as it moves up the screen. You really can't make this stuff up. It's absolutely awful. A terrible, terrible Spectrum game and a terrible, even worse Spectrum port. You'll have more fun ordering your very own gravestone than playing this. When I first played Rasputin, I was almost convinced it was an ultimate play the game and not a Firebird uh, label release. It's an absolute visual delight if you're a ZX Specky fan. It's very complex and also it's very difficult, but once you get your head around it, things slowly start to gel and you start to progress. Wonderful little game. This Amstrad CPC uh, port is no slouch either, and it's found some additional colour along the way. They've used mode uh, 0 at the bottom for the display and then mode 1 at the top. As far as I can tell, it runs at a similar speed. Armed with your magical shield and sword, you'll want to play this into the wee hours. If you've not played this on the Amstrad CPC, I urge you to pick it up and have a look at it. It's not going to be for everyone, but it just might be your cup of tea. A great little specky port. If you ever needed the proof that Ocean Software programmed crap games, this is it. It joins Street Hawk and Knight Rider in another mediocre conversion from the big screen. I can't imagine anybody enjoying this game. It's boring beyond belief and an absolute waste of an Arnie license. The Arnie sprite looks good though, it's really detailed and I like the facial expression. The Amstrad version is just absolutely piss poor. Even the black guys are pink. There's no score at the bottom of the screen like on the ZX Spectrum version and it runs at half the pace. It really is truly awful. There's no fun to be had here. So it's not that it's a bad specy port, it's just that the source code in the first place was going nowhere. Ocean actually did lots of terrible uh, conversions. Anyone remember Miami Vice? And Highlander, for Christ's sake? I played this quite a bit back in the day. It's another dungeon crawler. It's a nifty little chase around. Unlike Gauntlet, it's a flip screen affair and you must travel over six levels, picking up all sorts of items and you're armed to the teeth with a garlic gun. But let's have a look at the Amstrad port. It looks pretty much the same, probably less colour. It's just as heavy on the garlic. Again, it's another one of those if you can look past the graphics and have a taste for monochrome blood. It's a good game on the Amstrad to get your teeth into. There's no doubt that Gauntlet has been done to death on these systems, but I kept playing with this one until I finally killed the She-Vampire herself. Uh, I'm not sure what else to say on this one, other than it's a competent specky port and fun to play. The sound effects in this game are nothing to write home about, but for a specky game, the graphics and the update is superb. Action is as rip-roaring as the arcade original and this really is superior high-class racing on the ZX Spectrum. Super Hang-On really comes into its own on the ZX Spectrum when you hit that turbo button. I've no idea how they converted this game to the ZX Spectrum. It's absolutely brilliant and, and one of my all-time favourite racers. Plays very closely to the ZX Spectrum uh, original, but isn't quite as impressive in the graphics. But seriously, that doesn't spoil it for me. The game is just as playable. But could you imagine how wonderful this would have looked with a splash of colour? If you can look past the graphics and the ever so slightly slower road update, like me, you'll be playing this until the cows come home. It's a thumbs up from me. This is a fantastic little ninja combat game. There's over 16 moves available. It's spread over three stages, multi-load, and features some nasty looking opponents. At the time, it definitely felt like a cut above the rest for this type of genre. 
and clearly a clear winner on the Speccy. The Amstrad port comes with all the detail of the ZX Spectrum port. Um, probably loses a little bit of the speed in the conversion, but it's every bit as addictive and playable as the ZX Spectrum version. You could argue, and you'd be justified in doing so, that the game has a bit of a repetitive nature. But the scrolling is lovely to watch. The background is alive with animation. And there's a great deal of variety in the action. This is a good specy port. This one has aged really well. The graphics are as good as the original, if not better. And the gameplay is definitely just as addictive. And although it looks similar, all of your old winning techniques from the first game completely go out the window here. You're starting from scratch. The Amstrad doesn't suffer here either. This is an exact replica of the ZX Spectrum. The speed is the same, the slightly better sound, and what colors are used are put to good use. Once you load the game, you see a nice little neat guide of all the aliens and the obstacles and where, and where in the game you'll come across them. You should probably take a picture at this point because once you go past this point, you can't see them again, you can't call that up. That is the only frustrating thing about this game. Apart from that, it's a fantastic specy port and one to check out if you haven't. This one, back in the day, I'd have probably given this, I don't know, nine out of 10. It was that, it's that good. The great news is it's a British game and for the time it was uh, highly original. Immensely difficult to put down once you actually start to get into it. You're basically in charge of a bunch of droids called the deactivators and you're basically sent into a building to remove all the terrorist bombs. The Amstrad CPC version for me is every bit as good as the ZX Spectrum. So this is a really good port and it's not one of those games that necessarily needs bags of colour. You've essentially got two rooms in the display and then a map below telling you where the, the bombs are. It's not just a case of going in there, finding the bombs, you've got to pick up all sorts of little items, you've got to be able to get the circuit boards uh, working again, the electricity, the lights, it's fabulous it really is. Stranded on a seabed, you must escape from this 3D watery world. The only way back to the surface is to find and assemble all the different parts of the submarine that are scattered all over the seabed. Unfortunately, you've only got three tanks of oxygen. There's all sorts of nasty undersea monsters out to eat you. And guess what? It's quite a good game. The sound is absolutely awful in this Amstrad CPC version. First thing you need to do is turn it off. But the rest of the game is absolutely 100% identical, even in the speed department. The end of game screen is unbelievable as well. You need to really see that to believe it. There's nothing fishy about this game, and it's one of those, if you give it the time of day, it will reward you tenfold. Another fantastic little specky port for the Amstrad CPC. Oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. Fire Lord is one of the best games made for the ZX Spectrum. The programmer Steve Crow has really outdone himself here. The magazine reviews of the day didn't convey the sheer speed of this game. It's a fantastic little arcade adventure with lots of puzzles thrown in. And this is the same guy that did the amazing Starquake. I mean, just look at all the colours on display there. The Fire Lord is an excellent game on the Amstrad CPC as well. The graphics aren't as colourful as the Spectrum, but the sounds are still original. There's been a slight hit in the speed department, but we're not talking leisurely pace here. This is one of those games where there's no point even beginning to try and play it unless you're willing to map out where you're going. There's no doubt this would have looked great in 16 colour, but it's such a good game that you see past it straight away. An essential specy port. I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure what they were aiming for here, uh, Martech. It looks good, the presentation's good, the graphics are good, it zips along at real good pace. And although that might sound jolly, unfortunately it's as dull as dishwater. You simply just go as fast as you can and then fall asleep at the wheel. What on earth were they thinking with this one? The Amstrad CPC doesn't stand a chance. So here it is, just as fast, cars look graphically decent, 
Again, I wouldn't bother fastening your seatbelt. I'm sure somebody somewhere thought this was a great idea. There's three types of events. Uh, the first one is speed trial, go as fast as you can. Then there's the killing race, which is go as fast as you can and shoot as many cars as possible. And then there's the tig and tag race, where one car is it and you've all got to get it. As far as specy conversions, translations go, it's accurate, it's no different, retains all the same speed. I just hope nobody bought it back in the day. Talking about awful games, my god look at this, absolutely shocking. It's obviously aimed at kids, but uh, my kids would even be bored of this. There's no sound to speak of, the control is really sluggish. This must be one of the worst Spectrum games probably ever made, does anybody know? My money is on Count Ducula, but this can't be far off. And Amstrad CPC has got no chance again. I mean, it's a port for God's sake. It's either going to be the same pace or even slower. Christ on a bike. This is absolutely awful. You'll have more fun watching paint dry or listening to a game load. I can imagine mums and dads would have purchased this for Christmas or birthdays for their children. And the children would have slung it straight back at them. To add insult to injury, look at this. A full colour loading screen. What a joke. Now, I quite like this. I first played it uh, on an Amstrad Action cover tape, where I think you got the first couple of levels free. It's a nice little innovation on Arcanoid. And for a specy game, I mean, look at all the colours on the blocks. It's brilliant. It's you against the computer or against a friend. And there's different variety across the levels. So, you know, what's not to like? The Amstrad's gone all pink on us, but it's the same great, uh, you know, gameplay and level of detail. It's lost nothing other than the colour in its transit over to the Amstrad CPC. It's not one I ever owned or purchased. I just played the Amstrad CPC, um, Amstrad Action cover tape version. Um, but I played this and the Specky version recently and they're identical. There's no difference really. I, I wouldn't even like to choose. I'd say apart from the Commodore Amiga and maybe some might argue the PC Engine version, this is probably considered one of the best ZX Spectrum arcade conversions uh, that ever graced the system. Bob Pape was the brains behind this conversion. And to be quite honest, there's nothing quite like it. The speed of this thing is what sets it apart. And if you can complete this game on the ZX Spectrum, you'll have no problem completing the arcade original. You can't ask for more than that from a conversion. Who knew the Specky could use so many different colors? Collect objects, shoot baddies, you know the drill. This superb IRM classic also made it onto the Amstrad CPC, but a little disappointingly. The graphics have lost all of their color and the gameplay is good, but it's just not as remarkable as I'd hoped after seeing the excellent uh, ZX Spectrum conversion. Still, it's a great shooter though, and Keith Goodyear should be rightly proud of programming this Amstrad CPC version, considering the limitations and the time he was given. All the features are present. It's definitely a good blast, but it's not one today that I'd play over other versions. Thank God for the new update for R-Type 128K on the Amstrad CPC. It was everything Amstrad CPC R-Type fans could ever hope for. Don't you open that trap door! You're a fool if you dare. What a game, and I love the miniseries. Absolutely fantastic. And they stick to the script, the formula of the TV series really well. My daughter, she's only five, but she's watched all the original Trapdoor series. I doubt she's old enough, but hey ho. The Amstrad CPC version is excellent as well. It's a carbon copy, almost of the ZX Spectrum. And a real labor of love from the programmers. There's a whole multitude of taxing problems and troubles to resolve, but the game really will leave you satisfied. It looks identical as well to the original Trapdoor game. Again, simple but highly effective. Unfortunately, the average sound strikes again. And where's the theme music? I don't know what to say about this game. Uh, it's just decisively average. It looks awful. 
of all the color palettes you could use why yellow then just painting the wall as you can see there is a brighter shade of yellow Ooh. where's the flintstones music for christ's sake and why can't you play as barney rubble the amstrad cpc version looks like it's survived the translation however it's slightly different and placements are a little bit off i can tell it's the same game because it's done in yellow but once again it's absolutely it just feels aimless a flintstones game should have been fun should have had the music the theme i mean this really is the stuff of nightmares if you'd have bought this back in the day I mean, it's no good playing the bloody music on the title screen. You need it in-game. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, bye!